So this was the theoretic part. Now let's move to the empirical part. I'm going to use just NumPy and matplotlib. This is the objective function I'm going to use. It looks like this. So here, x marks the spot. This is the true minima. It's a very simple objective function. It also has a very tractable gradient. This is the gradient. And so we are just going to use that for the gradient. And although this has a closed form solution, we are going to use the gradient descent and all of the variants. Here I code the gradient. Here it's just some code that will plot the trajectories of each algorithm. We are going to start with vanilla gradient descent. So just from the point where you are, take a step in the opposite direction of the gradient. So the minus is the opposite, and this is the gradient. In all the algorithms, we are going to start from the same point. It's minus 6, minus 2. And at first, we'll put the learning rate to be equal to 1. Here we are running gradient descent. We start with just that point. Then we calculate the new point, And then we add this to the list of points that we have. Now let's implement momentum. We'll implement the paper version of it, not the EMA version. So we just take beta times the mu, and then we add the alpha, the learning rate, times the gradient. And then we just take a step in the opposite of whatever that is. So in the opposite direction of this momentum term. We implement this also. Note that we have to keep track of the mu. We have to update the mu all the time. And that's OK. And now if we plot this, it looks like this. So this is the point where we start from. And for both algorithms, the first step is the same. It's exactly the same. But then the gradient descent starts to oscillate. It doesn't move slower in the vertical direction, whereas the momentum term, something starts to change. So we can see that already in the second step, it moves further to the right. So it built momentum on the horizontal axis because we had two gradients pointing in the same direction in the horizontal axis, and it breaks on the vertical axis because we have one gradient that goes up in the vertical axis and another gradient going down in the vertical axis. So it gives a lot of weight to the going down, but it also takes into account the going up. And so we see that it doesn't go so down. It goes less down. Yeah, and this is how it continues. And we see that overall it performs better in this specific scenario. Now let's implement NAG. So we calculate x pure, which is a step in the direction of the pure momentum. And this is x pure. Then we calculate the gradient on x pure, and we just do momentum uh, with regards to this gradient of x pure. And then we take a step in the opposite direction of this momentum term, and this is nag. We do this, and we run it. And here, for this specific problem, nag goes completely crazy. So it starts to really go crazy. But this is due to the fact that we take a pretty big learning rate of 1. Let's use a smaller learning rate and also a bigger beta, a more realistic beta of 0.9. If we run this again, this is what we get. We can see that the gradient descent is kind of slow on this problem. Momentum lives up to its name and gains momentum, but it tends to overshoot. So it really looks like a ball where it gained momentum, and then it has to break, and then it has to break. So it's kind of chaotic, the momentum term here. Whereas for NAG, we can see that it's more moderate. So we see that NAG really manages to be the best option here. It overshoots a bit the minima, but it will go back. And it seems that it's a good choice for this problem. Now let's implement Adagrad. We said that in Adagrad, we just take the second moment and we accumulate it. So this is what we do here. And then we take uh, the square root of that and we divide the gradient by the square root of that. And this is how it's implemented here. RMS prop, instead of taking the unbounded sum, uses a exponential moving average of this squared gradient. And so this is how we are implementing the RMS prop. At a delta, we are taking an RMS of both the gradient and of the steps that we are actually taking. And then we use the RMS of the dx in the numerator and the RMS of the g squared in the denominator to get the dx. And we take a step here. Now it's time for Adam. Here we are doing both momentum and RMS. So we need beta 1 and beta 2. This is the EMA of the momentum. This is the EMA of the RMS. These are the bias correction terms. And this is the step. In the numerator, we have the momentum. In the denominator, we have the RMS. And we take a step in that direction. This is Adamax. Uh, 
the m terms doesn't change, so the mu terms stay the same. Instead of v, we are using u, and this is the simple update formula that we saw above. We take the maximum between the current gradient in absolute value and the previous maximum times beta 2. Okay, so we implement this. This is not um. So here the v term stays exactly the same. The mean term, uh, we calculate the mu and then we expand it. And there are two changes that we do here. After this expansion, we should have used the m from before, but we are using the current m. So this is mu t instead of mu t minus one. And here we should have used t plus one, t starting from zero. So this is why we are adding plus one. And so t plus one is equivalent to the t previously, but here we do t plus two, which is equivalent to the t plus one. Okay, so this is what we do here. Yeah, and if we take the final plot, this is how it looks like. So gradient descent, momentum, and nag as before, we see that Adograd stops somewhere over here. So it slowed down substantially, it didn't move, which is the problem that we knew about. RMS prop seems to move quite well. Ada delta, it's also maybe somewhere here. It doesn't look like it moved that much. Adam and Nadam are very close to one another, but Nadam seems to be a bit better. Yeah, Adam X, it seems like it reached somewhere here. Yeah, and this is the results that we have. Let's run it again on 20 steps instead of 10 steps. And we get this picture. So yeah, this is gradient descent. This is momentum. We see it kind of goes crazy. This is nag. We see it overshoots the true objective, but it kind of starts to correct for it. RMS prop in purple. So here it seems that nag and RMS prop are the best candidates to reach the objective. So they performed the best on this specific problem with these specific learning rates and uh, beta parameters. Adam and Nadam are again, very close by. Nadam may be a bit better. Adamax is here, not so bad, but uh, a bit behind. Uh, yeah, Ada Delta is far behind and Adagrad is completely halted here. It can't move because the gradients are just, because the squared gradients are too big and we accumulate them more and more and then we divide by the square root of that. So you're just stopping and we don't continue anymore. Yeah, so this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one. Thank you.